We just arrived in one of the most remote inhabited places between North America and Europe. We'll be here for three days. Come along to see what it's like. This is one of the most absolutely breathtaking places I've ever seen. I've never seen anything like this in my life. Welcome to the Faroe Islands. It takes about 90 minutes to reach the Vega Airport from Norway's capital, Oslo. I'll link to another video about how to get here below. These 18 islands are located at 62 degrees north, high in the northern hemisphere. About an hour by car from the Vega Airport, we found our home base and the place where many visitors stay here. It's the capital, Torshavan. It's a charming city with candy-colored buildings that sparkle in the sunlight and no doubt help brighten the long, cold, dark winters in this northern climate. Less than 50,000 people call the Faroe Islands home. About 13,000 of them live here in Torshavan. On a small peninsula darting into the harbor from the city, these red buildings are the center of the Faroese self-ruled government. The Vikings first established a parliament here in the year 825, which makes it one of the planet's oldest parliamentary meeting places. Although the Faroe Islands are part of the Kingdom of Denmark, they retain a great deal of home rule, overseeing nearly everything for themselves aside from international relations and their police force. Fishing, especially for salmon, is a key part of the Faroese economy, and it's not hyperbole to say we ate some of the best fish we've had anywhere during our stay. Our visit in midsummer meant the sun never fully set, but after a restful night, thanks to blackout curtains, we got in a car and discovered one of the world's most significant feats of engineering. This is the Estroy Tunnel, the second longest tunnel you can drive through in the world. It's seven miles link the islands of Stramoy, where Torshavan is, with Estroy, where we're heading. And it's home to this, the world's first roundabout under an ocean. Here, we're more than 230 feet below the surface of the North Atlantic. We made our way onto a schooner to travel to Kalsoy Island. Engineers are building even more miles of undersea tunnels to make trips between islands faster for residents, but we were grateful for the slower pace of this one. It's thought the name Faroe, as in Faroe Islands, comes from the Old Norse word for sheep, or sheep islands. And with more of the ruminants here than people, it's easy to see why. I'd soon come to envy their sure-footedness once we arrived on Kolsoy, where I discovered the challenges of hiking here. Thanks to the wet climate, abundant birds offering plenty of uh, fertilizer, and my own lack of any measurable degree of coordination, our hike was more like a combination of swimming up a muddy hill, skiing across a mud path, and occasionally leveraging enough balance to avoid sliding right back where we'd come from. every footstep was completely worth it. This highland is home to only 45 people. This hike, possibly the most popular in the Faroe Islands, was the only time on our visit where we saw other tourists outside of Torshavan. It culminates at the Kalar Lighthouse. Parts of it even feature in the James Bond movie, No Time to Die. As the Scandinavian saying goes, there's no bad weather, just bad clothes. Smart hikers pack for all four seasons here. We are the fastest hikers in the world. I mean, probably not the slowest either. Somewhere in the middle, like we take it easy, take breaks, take pictures. That took about about two hours for us. Not for the faint of heart, I will say. It's a little bit intense, but um, we made it. I nearly slipped and fell a couple of times. Suzanne yeah. was Suzanne was as as delft as a sheep. My uh, ankles feel like they're on fire, but I'm all good. <laughs> Our legs and ankles cooled off while we strolled around flat ground in one of the island's few towns while we waited to catch the ferry back. Although it is worth saying, flat ground is a relative term in the Faroe Islands. The ferry soon appeared, the bow slowly opening. Arriving passengers disembarked, before we boarded and set off again. 
while it was raining where we'd hiked earlier. Here, on the other side of the island, the sun shone brightly. Weather in the North Atlantic Ocean is, in a word, dynamic. Even the best weather app will prove useless here. Back in Torshavan, we tried the local brew before enjoying fresh sushi, followed by another solid night's rest. The next day found us in Saksun, the site of a secluded bay and a beautiful church. I was most impressed by the anti-gravity waterfalls. Not all could be overcome by the wind, though. We made our way to the small village of Chutnovik. Here, we marveled at the view, wandered through the narrow streets, and even warmed up with a cup of coffee and a local delicacy, homemade waffles. Those two freestanding rocks are known as the Giant and the Hag. Legend has it they came from Iceland and tried to take these islands back home with them. They failed to complete the task before the sun rose and they turned to stone and remained locked there forever. The Faroe Islands are absolutely incredible. There's so much uh, history and scenic uh, beauty packed into this place. There's really nowhere else in the world quite like it. A short drive and we found ourselves viewing the giant and the hag from another angle. We made our way to Jegv, which literally translates to gorge in English for obvious reasons. It's so easy in a place like the Faroe Islands to be distracted by the vistas and beautiful landscapes, but it's important also to notice the beauty that exists in the details. In the mere 10 minutes we'd been here, the weather went from beautiful and sunny to completely socked in. It's not about the weather, it's about how you're dressed. <laughs> We're set up. There's no such thing as bad weather, only poor clothing choices. We returned to Torshavan, where we had lunch in our car. We waited for a helicopter that would take us to a more remote island. This will be Suzanne's first time ever in a helicopter. I'm a little nervous. Should I be? No, it's totally fine. It's a different kind of experience. There's no doubt about that. Yeah. Uh, the, the lifting off, if you haven't done it, is a little bit weird the first time. But man, it's a blast. You're going to love it. See you on the other side. Inshallah. Helicopters are essential to the Faroese for moving between islands. We spotted our ride, an Augusta Westland 139 named for Ruth Smith, a famous painter from the Faroes. It landed, we boarded, and lifted off in no time at all. I couldn't help but be impressed with the skill of the pilots operating in these weather conditions. The trip took us back to the airport where we visited another incredibly remote island. However, I'm not ashamed to tell you, I left my camera behind for this next segment. Even as a YouTuber, it's important to see some of the world with my own eyes and not through a lens. Too often, I've looked back on an experience only to realize my only memories were, were captured by my camera. I'm so glad I didn't take my camera with me on this afternoon's hike. It's one that will stay with me forever. I'm sorry not to share it with you, but it was the right choice for me. I'd encourage you to do the same. See the world, not for an Instagram post, but for yourself. That said, you can absolutely count on more videos from Suzanne and me. We love sharing these remote parts of the world with you and how we get there. Between now and the next time, see you in the sky.